नमस्कार टुडे वी स्टडी दि पाथोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ कार्डियक अरेजमिया द मेकानिज्म ऑफ कार्डियक अरेजमिया सो फॉर दैट वी लेट अस नो व्हाट इज कार्डियक अरेजमिया when we say the uh, cells of cardiac muscle or myocardial fibers uh, there are two characteristics of this cardiac muscle one is automaticity the impulse is generated on its own uh, the sna sa node generates the impulse then it passes uh, through the atrium and reaches the av node then it reaches the bundle of his then from bundle of his through purkinje fibers it goes so automaticity is there then this contraction of atrium for 0.1 second followed by contraction of ventricle for 0.3 second then they relax for 0.4 seconds so the cardiac cycle uh, takes 0.8 second the heart rate is 72 per minute so there is a rhythm so two features are there two characteristics are there in cardiac muscle one is automaticity and the other is rhythmicity so the rate is constant the rhythm is uh, uh, there is a rhythm of the contraction of the heart so if there is any disturbance in the rate and rhythm of heart that causes cardiac arrhythmia arrhythmia means uh, the rhythm is disturbed and there is another term called dysrhythmia dysrhythmia means uh, uh, for, for, wherever you use the term dys that means pain is associated so arrhythmia with pain okay now we'll discuss the mechanism of arrhythmia how this arrhythmia occurs so we said that uh, for this rhythm the, uh, the the conduction system of the heart has uh, you know um, first impulse is generated then impulse is conducted so if there is uh, um, disturbance in impulse formation that 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 will lead to arrhythmia if there is disturbance in impulse conduction then that will lead to arrhythmia Uh, and there may be also both disturbance in impulse formation as well as impulse conduction so disturbance in impulse formation occurs due to abnormal pacemaker activity and pacemaker is nothing but our sa node so um, we'll discuss that and uh, disturbance in impulse formation can also occur due to after depolarizations okay and disturbance in impulse conduction occurs uh, due to reentry which may be anatomically defined or functionally defined or may be due to heart block so let us discuss one by one so abnormal pacemaker activity we know the pacemaker is a sa node and uh, uh, from the sa node the impulse is uh, formed or generated if there are some other points other than sa node there are points from which impulse is generated that point that site is called ectopic focus okay and that ectopic focus develop abnormal self excitability okay so in addition to sa node there will be more uh, impulse so that will cause abnormal self excitability and why this occurs this occurs uh, uh, this may be triggered by caffeine nicotine electrolyte imbalances hypoxia digitalis therapy uh, myocardial ischemia uh increase in sympathetic discharge okay so this is one cause of uh, abnormal impulse formation the other cause of abnormal impulse formation is after depolarization these are secondary depolarizations uh, and uh, as we discussed uh, in our previous class the relative refractory period the relative refractory period can be our uh, the phase 3 or phase 4 so during phase 3 and phase 4 if Um, during phase two, this is phase zero, phase one, phase two. This is phase three, and um, finally there will be phase four. So, if during the phase three, uh, the secondary depolarizations occur, that is called early after depolarizations. And if uh, during uh, phase four the uh, uh, secondary depolarizations occur, then they are called delayed after depolarizations. And early after depolarizations are uh, Mm, triggered by bradycardia whereas uh, uh, tachycardia triggers the delayed after depolarizations so uh, early after depolarizations mainly cause uh, in lengthening of qt interval so all long qt related uh, uh, arrhythmias are due to early after depolarizations similarly mm, when there is myocardial ischemia uh, dig digital toxicity uh, catecholamine uh, excess there will be increased intracellular calcium 
there will be activation of the sodium calcium exchanger and uh, there will be delayed after depolarizations which results in arrhythmia so this is another mechanism of uh, um, um, disturbance in impulse formation so in these cases all these cases there will be involvement of sodium or calcium channels or the potassium channels depending on the situation we can use sodium channel blocker we can use uh, calcium channel blocker we can use potassium channel blocker okay then <coughs> disturbance in impulse uh, conduction so let us see how the impulse actually conducts through purkins fibers uh one impulse comes here you can see the impulse is bifurcated here then here again it is bifurcated uh, this impulse is bifurcated here and the impulse from two opposite directions come in contact with each other and get neutralized so normal conduction is every impulse gets neutralized at certain point but what happens if if uh, uh, anat because of uh, anatomical problem or any functional problem uh, like uh, anatomically defined problem like clot or if is in atrium okay or any accessory pathway or functional defined if there is ischemia uh, there is a refractory period okay so refractory period means the impulse cannot be conducted here so what happens this uh, this impulse uh once it goes here it has to be neutralized by the another impulse from opposite direction and if uh, because of refractoriness in this area because of refractory period okay you you uh, need to uh, um, see our last class uh, to know about this refractory period so ref because of refractoriness this impulse will be blocked here okay so now what happens the, the, this bidirectional uh, thing will become now one directional okay so, and this impulse from this side will come and when this impulse reaches this area and the refractory period is there still then this impulse will also die here but if this happens that when this impulse comes there is refractory period and when this impulse comes there is no refractory period then this impulse will come okay by that time if next impulse comes then also it it can be neutralized here but if uh, the, the next impulse has not come then it will it will again uh, re enter this area so this this will cause the re entry and the, the also called as circus movement circus movement or re entry and continuously that area will be excited and that will cause arrhythmia okay so the conditions for arrhythmia uh, due to re entry or circus movement is one obstacle will be there which may be anatomic or uh, physiologic okay uh, there there must be unidirectional block okay unidirectional block have to be there no bidirectional block and third point is conduction times should be more than the effective refractory period so this area has one effective refractory period and if the conduction time uh, is less than the effective refractory period what happens uh, this will uh, this will uh, uh, when it will reach here uh, the the um, this uh, the this will die here and the con there will be no further conduction but if uh, the conduction time is more than the effective refractory period what will happen after that refractory period it will reach and it will again re enter and so the re for this re entry these three conditions has to be fulfilled so uh, what to do in that case uh, we have to uh, um, make this make this block bidirectional block okay so how, how to do it we can increase the refractory period here effective refractory period we have to increase here or uh, what we can do we can slow the conduction here so that uh, by the time it will reach here there will be a, a, another refractory period so either we can slow the impulse conduction or we can increase the effective refractory period in this way we can deal with the reentrant uh, arrhythmia 
Okay, let us see one example of uh, the anatomically defined uh, uh, re-entrant arrhythmia. This is commonly called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. And uh, this Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, <coughs> what happens? There is one accessory pathway. Okay, there is one accessory pathway, and uh, in this accessory uh, pathway, what happens? The impulse from the uh, atrium. Okay, it can uh, it is blocked here. Okay, the impulse from the atrium is blocked here. So the, any premature atrial impulse uh, faces unidirectional block here. Okay, in the accessory pathway, but propagate slowly through the AVI node. This is AVI node. So propagate slowly through the AVI node, and uh, this this is actually accessory pathway. It consists of fast responsive tissue, and AVI node consists of slow responsive tissue. And if somehow it uh, uh, when it reaches this accessory pathway and it uh, uh, there is no refractoriness and it again uh, re-enters the AVI node, so in that case this uh, this will be a uh, re-entrant arrhythmia, okay. And uh, this is anatomically defined because of this accessory pathway, and uh, there can be the other way also. Suppose. Uh, uh, the uh, impulse is bypassing this AV node and uh, passing through passing through the uh, accessory pathway and uh, again through AV node it uh, reaches the accessory pathway and in this way it uh, re-enters again and again. So in both ways um, the AV node will be involved and AV node uh, actually helps uh, uh, to cause this re-entry. Why? Because it consists of slow responsive tissue and here the accessory pathway which consists of fast responsive tissue. This is called WPW uh, syndrome. This is one type of re-entrant arrhythmia. Then heart block can also cause uh, uh, this uh, arrhythmia and uh, there is, uh, uh, if the AV node is damaged due to infection or fibrosis, then it fails to conduct and atria and ventricle beat independent of each other and there will be finally complete AV block. And if, if for this uh, we can treat it by using an implant uh, or a RTL, uh, artificial pacemaker in place of the AV node. So here uh, treatment is artificial pacemaker. And here treatment uh, is slow uh, the impulse conduction or increase the effective refractive period. And uh, in, in ectopic pacemakers as well as uh, uh, your um, early after depolation and delayed after depolation we have to use the channel blockers, sodium channel blockers, calcium channel blockers, okay. And uh, this also how, how we can uh, slow the conduction, again we can we have to block the sodium or calcium channels and how we can increase the effective refractory period, uh, we, we have to block the potassium channel, potassium channel blocker we can use, okay. So now let us see the types of arrhythmia. And uh, if prime, the, there can be extra systoles, uh, if uh, some uh, premature beats uh, originate from the ectopic foci, they are called extra systoles, and they can be in the atrium, ventricle, or uh, in the nodes, a nodal. Okay. Then uh, whenever we use the word paroxysm, that means it is beginning and ending suddenly. Okay. Then we can have tachycardia when the heart rate is uh, more than 100 and it can be atrial tachycardia, this can be nodal tachycardia, that means uh, the rhythmicity of AV node is greater than the SA node, okay, and the focus is the AV junction. Then there can be ventricular tachycardia, okay, and when you use the term paroxysmal, that means ending and uh, uh, beginning and ending suddenly, all these uh, paroxysmal atrial, atrial tachycardia, paroxysmal nodal tachycardia, paroxysmal ventricular tachycardia. There can be bradycardia when the heart rate is less than 60, we call it brad bradycardia. Then uh, uh, when the contractions of atrium uh, is mo more than 200, 200 to 400 per minute, then we call it atrial flutter. And this can be pure flutter when the regular rhythm is maintained. And this can be impure flutter when the rhythm is irregular, ventricle fails to uh, follow the atrium. And uh, similarly, we can have ventricular flutter also when there is uh, to more than 250 contractions per minute. And that atrial flutter then finally leads to atrial fibrillation. Uh, that means rapid, irregular, uncoordinated, chaotic movements of atria will result in atrial fibr fibrillation, rapid, irregular and uncoordinated uh, 
uh, movements of ventricle result in ventricular fibrillation. And sometimes there is uh, um, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia where there is prolonged QT interval. Prolonged QT interval, you can see a prolonged QT interval and uh, there is gradually changing QRS complex in the ECG and these are called torsed D points. Usually they are self-limiting but may lead to ventricular fibrillation. And there can be supraventricular tachycardia means uh, uh, the focus point, the origin, um, origin is proximal to the bundle of his bifurcation. So the atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation all are coming under supraventricular tachycardia. And paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia means supraventricular tachycardia which is beginning and end, ending suddenly. Then we have uh, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Already we have discussed this Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome in the anatomical um, type of re-entrant arrhythmia. And uh, uh, two ways uh, this can happen. Uh, either it can it can bypass the AV node and pass through the uh, pass through the accessory pathway and re -ent again re-enter, or uh, it it is blocked in the accessory pathway and through AV node it can again re-enter. Okay, so this is uh, all about uh, uh, pathophysiology of cardiac arrhythmia. Thank you.